Good evening, and welcome to another fruitless episode of Diatribes from the Voice of Doom. Now here's your frivolous and frustrated host, Voice of Doom! (laughs) Hello. Okay, I'm going to get back to the politics because we have uh, 24 days left until this so-called election. 24 days before we uh, find out what's going to happen to circumvent this um, democratic exercise because it just can't happen. And I have been talking to my customers at the bar and uh, everyone's kind of on the same page and everyone kind of knows I am not an outlier anymore I am not a conspiracy theorist or someone you know howling at the wind Um, as far as my theories everyone knows that we can't have an election everyone agrees and they're just wondering how <clears throat> things are going to play out. Everybody knows something's going to happen and everyone is filled with dread and trepidation. And they should be. It's about time. So, I want to just go through a few things about Gargoyle because uh, she needs to be uh, put in her place. Now, the last time I talked in this vein gargoyle was about to embark on her countrywide media blitz tour where she was going to display her political acumen her clear thinking pragmatism when it comes to solving national and international problems and crises and display her leadership qualities and I think we all know what happened. Uh, we don't really have to reiterate, but I will say a few things. First of all, I guess she went on this call me daddy, tried to relate to the skanks, get them on her team. I think she's probably sewn up that particular faction of society. So I don't think she has to do too much to win over the women who run around, have sex with strangers, and uh, discard their fetuses if necessary. So I don't know why she would go there, but she did. Didn't watch it, don't want to. Saw a few of the low lights, and I didn't hear anything new. She went on The View and was actually kind of cornered and corralled by one of the view ladies who probably was trying to help her but it's like uh, trying to help a drowning person they bring them all down with you I just don't know why she answers things the way she does would you have done anything different Is there anything that Petri Dish did that you would have done differently? Oh, I can't think of anything. I mean, you could say a lot of things without actually destroying Petri Dish. In which she's a total hypocrite because she doesn't like him, he doesn't like her. Oh, I love you, Joe. I love you. (laughs) Give me a break. Not anything different. I would have handled Afghanistan the exact same way. I would have uh, still put forward these ridiculously expensive propositions and uh, bills to uh, exacerbate uh, inflation. I would have uh, done everything the exact same way. But we have to turn the page. We have to move on. We have to uh, 
get something new and different and brave and brat and whatever platitudes upon platitudes and nobody's in the mood for that anymore there was a day probably back in the 70s and 80s where platitudes would work that's all people wanted to hear from their so-called president is let's make America the shining hill on the sea let's uh you know work to make opportunity for all the people and have a great country and everybody will be happy and everybody will get everything they want you could do that because we weren't really in the crises that we are now so platitudes are fine but now especially with social media and everyone having their own network their own channel there's just more exposure there's more uh, difference of opinions there's more exposure the mainstream media only had so much time and they had to put commercials in there and everything else so they really didn't have a whole lot of time to delve into the idiocy delve into the lies but unfortunately someone invented the internet and made it possible for every idiot to expound their ideas and their opinion and some people aren't idiotic and they actually do their homework and people are getting a lot of information and they're seeing through the platitudes they're seeing through the lies so it just doesn't work anymore you need succinct answers whether you like them or not and that's what you get from orangey so what else did she do uh, I don't remember the whole lineup of idiots I'm gonna have a beer with what the hell his name is Colbert Miller High Life that's my favorite beer you probably don't drink beer and you're just having one just to show that you're a regular person who drinks one of the worst beers ever made the only thing worse than Miller High Life is Miller Lite which is absolutely undrinkable remember me and my buddies we were 15 and back in those days you had to use your wits to get alcohol it's, it's harder now but I mean when you're 15 you gotta do what you have to do and we found some Miller Lite in some garage refrigerator somewhere and we took it into the car went off to have a good time and we could not drink it now when you're 15 and you can't drink the beer you'd rather just not drink then you know it's bad so Miller is not a good product but she popped one with uh, Colbert and uh, clinking glasses and no oh, we're such ordinary humans see how we are just like you so idiocy um, I think that was the highlight of the interview and then she goes on this idiots show who has never been talented has never been funny this an aberration this makes me believe that people sell their souls to Satan in order to be famous so that's the only way somebody like Howard Stern could become as famous as he is because he has no redeeming qualities he's not funny he's not witty he's not smart he's not well informed but people seem to like him and they still oh, I used to like him back in I didn't like him ever never and I gave him a chance I watched his show on TV I'd listen to him on the radio for a minute or two before it's like this is just too damn boring I'd rather listen to PBS the ladies talking about recipes or whatever okay so what is uh this no talent idiot do he talks about how it's so unfair just because you're a woman they're making fun of you I find that so unfair I find his impunicity so unfair absolute hypocrite he's been lambasting he's been degrading women all his life he built his whole brand 
on debasing women. Oh, it's not fair because you're a woman. So he turns into a mushy little marshmallow that should be treated as such. You know what we do with marshmallows when we go camping. I won't go more into that, but that was a fiasco. And it's all softball. She would not be able to do anything with any of those interviews to forward her cause. Now, she goes on a 60 Minutes CBS, and uh, the guy actually asked some questions that are hard for her to answer. Um, I don't remember offhand, but I know he asked her some stuff about the border and things she could have done when she was vice president and she had rambling answers and we all thought oh that's nice the uh, guy is actually giving a decent interview somewhat confrontational somewhat adversarial and uh it turns out later they edited the whole damn thing to make her look good you know make her answers look succinct and uh clear so we all know the mainstream media will do everything they can to clean up after her almost like the people in the old days that cleaned up the horse crap behind the horse that was crapping okay so that was not good so nothing was good so now it's time to bring out the big guns yeah, time is growing short so we need to bring out the big guns the uh, berries and the bills I didn't see anything of Bill but the guy has a way with words so he's still got a certain amount of pull but Barry's a kingmaker okay he was president for two terms he was the first so-called black president and he proceeds to go into a barber shop or some stupid place and you know, some, you know just so uh, stereotypical situation hey, go to the black barbershop talk to these young folks about how if you don't vote for this woman you are just uh, afraid of women you're a misogynist you just don't believe a woman can run the country but it never really occurred to the guy that maybe people could vote for a woman but they're gonna vote for whoever is in their best interest whoever they see can solve problems whoever they see is more competent more action oriented and we all know that gargoyle is very lazy extremely doesn't want to do any work whatsoever none um, and she's gonna try to run what used to be this country which is appropriate because she's running a, a barren wasteland but it's just so condescending it's almost as bad as tea tree dishes if you don't vote for me you ain't black Barry wants to pigeonhole everybody into you know for the first time you have a candidate who's just like you lived like you gone to school with you yeah she was in the hood all right she was uh, afraid of gangs when she walked home from school and uh, she was lucky enough to get into a black college and make something of herself okay come on it's nothing like that she was upper middle class that's how she was raised her parents were professional people so that's a big lie and of course they want to talk about the lies of orangey oh, how can I vote for a guy who lies and lies and lies and lies well name one lie well uh, he said uh, he said uh, that uh, the uh, people in the hurricane aren't getting their money or they're not getting anything or they're not getting help or whatever most of what he says is the truth nobody wants to hear the truth who wants to hear the truth you want me to tell the truth about you oh, yeah I want to hear it okay so people don't know why they hate orangey I'm the only one that knows why and I've already explained it but then you see these 
promo ads. Bruce Springsteen at two Brutus. Born in the USA. We propped him up as a as a cultural god back in the seventies. Bruce Springsteen was taking the world by storm with his with his lyrics, with his story like songs and he was a brilliant musician and songwriter then he cut his beard and so did the born in the USA and tried to make himself out to be some big American patriot and now he's degenerated to I am voting for Kamala give me a break I mean they should bottle all those things up together into some sort of a elixir and use it to induce vomiting. I think it would make a lot of money as a purge, a purg purgatory. Uh, but the last but not least is probably the worst. I'm a man who eats carburetors for breakfast and I'm not afraid of women, so I'm going to vote for you know, gargoyle. Come on. First of all, watch the commercial carefully. They're all effete, effeminate, leg-crossing <coughs> wusses. And you can just tell by looking at them. I don't care how manly they look, a long beard. I'm Mr. Beard. I'm Mr. Man, Mr. Muscles. There's a lot of muscles in Muscle Beach. There's a lot of muscles in the gay gyms. So give me a break. It's disgusting. And Gargoyle is disgusting, and it's already over 16 minutes, so I'm going to let it go. I can do this forever. I'm going to come up with a whole bunch of new crap next time. And continue to lambaste and lampoon the current Democratic uh, candidate for what used to be president. So that's it. It wasn't that good, but I just wanted to wrap up and uh, summarize all that crap. So, uh, I'll see you next time, and I'll do one in a day or two. Thanks, and uh, good luck.